wish you could cut down the time you spend on server admin tasks? Or are you looking for a way to automate your home lab server management? Well, in this video, I'll show you how to automate everything from initial server setup and VM installs to keeping Proxmox, Docker and Kubernetes up to date. We'll also be automating the initial setup of a PostgreSQL database with different application users and databases. All of this with Ansible. This tool is so powerful, I use it at home and at my job and I cannot wait to share it with you. But before we jump in, we are extremely close to 2k subscribers. So make sure to subscribe if you're new here. So I recently added this new server to my Proxmox cluster and it's a pretty nice mini PC with 16 CPU cores and 16 gigs of RAM. And of course, being a fresh install, I installed the latest Proxmox version on it, but all my other nodes were on different older versions of Proxmox. So that got me thinking, how can I automate maintenance and set up tasks such as this? That's how I got into Ansible. And as you can see, I have a bunch of nodes here with a bunch of VMs. So there's a lot of possibility for automation. But before we look at how an Ansible project is structured, first, there are a couple of prerequisites. You should have Python version three installed. So here I have version 3.10.12. You should also have Ansible installed. I'm not going to show you that. You can find the documentation online on how to install it. But as you can see here, I have Ansible version 2.17.8. Another nice thing to have is this Ansible official VS Code add-on, which gives you language support, IntelliSense and all that. So let's see how my Ansible project is structured. The folders you have to create is the inventory folder. This contains an inventory of all your machines or VMs that you want to automate. Playbooks is where you define all the automations in YAML format. We'll look at all of this a bit later. Roles is something I might not get into in this video. It's a bit of a more advanced topic. In VARS, you can store all your variables and secrets. So you can safely store encrypted secret using Ansible Vault, which we'll look at a bit later as well. As you can see, these are secrets that are safe to commit even in a Git repo, though I wouldn't commit them to a public repo, but maybe in a private repository is fine. And here I also have ansible.cfg, which is the general config for the Ansible project. So here I set up a few stuff so that I don't have to repeat them in all of my commands. So I set the inventory file path to this file. I set the remote user to be root. This is where my SSH key is on this host machine and where the Python interpreter will usually be on all of the machines. This last one is optional actually. And here I also have a few default settings related to privilege escalation. So become equals true. That means wherever you see the word become, it means executing commands as sudo. Become equals two is the default. If you want a specific playbook to not run as sudo, then you have to specify that in the specific playbook to override this default base. Next, let's look at my inventory file. As you can see here, I define a group of machines. These are physical servers. All these are four mini PCs. Here I added all their IPs, the users and the pseudo passwords, which are coming from the Ansible vault secrets that we'll look at a bit later. So you can group machines, but you can also create groups of groups. For example, here are all the VMs. I created a new group based on three other groups. So these are Docker machines, Kubernetes workers, and the Kubernetes control planes. And I also created a group called everything, which targets everything. So the idea with Ansible is when I add a new VM or a new physical server, I simply add it here and then run all the automations and everything will be set up as I want it to. But first, let me show you an important feature of Ansible, which is the Ansible vault that manages the secrets. So here's the command to create an Ansible vault. It's Ansible vault create, and we're going to place the, this vault file in vars example yaml. And it will ask us for a vault password. This will be used to decrypt the Ansible vault. So make sure you store it. Let's pick a password, example one, confirm. And there we go. Here it's opened Vim. We can add some, we create value and give it a value of one, two, three, four. Let's exit Vim, escape colon, write, quit, force. And there we have it. Our vault is now created. 
let's see it as you can see it's encrypted just to make your life easier you can create a simple text file like this one i have here with the password for the vault just make sure you add it to git ignore so now that we have that password saved in a file you can use the ansible vault edit command and pass in that vault password file as a parameter and of course we have to tell it which vault to edit and here's our old secret value. We can add another one, press I to go into insert mode, some other secret value, and then write quit force. As you can see, the secrets are encrypted. So like I said, just make sure not to commit the password to the Git repo, but this is probably safe to commit to a private git repo. Now let's look at a playbook and I prepare the most basic Ansible playbook to show you how secrets with Ansible Vault work. I'm targeting localhost. I don't need to use sudo for this. So become, if you remember in the global config was set to true. Here I'm explicitly setting it false for this playbook. I include these vars files and then I'm simply using the built-in debug module to just print something out of the console. So to run this playbook, it's pretty simple. We just do ansible playbook, pass in the vault password file, and then the path to the ansible playbook itself. So playbooks vault pass demo. So when I run this, I see an error that the variable some secret value is undefined. And actually, when you see errors such as this, you should also check the paths. So here we are trying to include the Ansible Vault file, but this path is relative to the playbook file. So it should be one folder up and then vars secrets example.yaml. So let's try again. And now, as you can see, one, two, three, four was the secret value. This is how you do string interpolation. So here I am using this double curly brackets and then the variable name to use it within my playbook. But before we run any automation, we have to make sure that our SSH key is copied to any server or any VM we want to target with our automations. So that's pretty easy to do with the SSH copy ID command. And we pass in the path to our SSH key on this local machine and then the target server. And in this case, I'm targeting this new server that I just added and its IP is this. So root at this IP and I have to provide the password and that's it. The key was added. And now if I SSH to this server, you will see that it doesn't require the password anymore because the SSH key has been installed on that server. And now we're ready to automate. So yeah, copy your SSH key to all of the servers and VMs you want to automate. And let's start with a simple automation that removes the enterprise Proxmox repositories and installs the non-enterprise non-subscriptions repositories so that we get rid of that annoying Proxmox warning in the UI. So this is a simple Ansible playbook that fixes the Proxmox repository errors and warnings you would get in the UI by removing the PVE enterprise repositories, which require a subscription and adding the PVE non-subscription repositories, which do not require a subscription. Here we are targeting only the Proxmox node. If you remember in the inventory, the Proxmox nodes include this newly added one. We run every command as a root, and then we use the built-in app repository Ansible module. We set the state of the PV enterprise repository to absent, and the PV no subscription repository should be present. And we do the same with the SEP repositories. We remove the enterprise one, and we add the no subscription one. And at the end, we simply update the apt cache. This is the equivalent of running sudo apt update. So let's run this playbook. And all right, as you can see here, the become pass is an undefined variable. And this is because here in the inventory file, I'm using this variable that is from Ansible Vault, but in the Proxmox playbook, I didn't include that file. So let's try again. As you can see, this was pretty easy to do. Now for some more advanced automations, like the PostgreSQL one we will look at a bit later, those required Python 
and some Python packages to be installed on the target machine. So here I create an Ansible script that targets all my VMs because uh, this sort of automations will be done only in VMs and not really on the Proxmox nodes themselves. Otherwise it's the same as you saw before, but here what we do, we use the built-in app module again to update the cache, make sure Python 3 is present as well as Python 3 pip and for the Postgres SQL automation we will use the Psycho PG package and for some Docker automation we will also use the Python Docker package. So we make sure all of these are present on all of the VMs. So let's run this playbook. And I was probably running an older version of Python and now they are all upgraded. So you can see if we run again, we are on Python 3.12, but before we were on 3.11. Now let me show you the Ansible script I'm using to update Proxmox itself. So I'm targeting the Proxmox nodes. Again, it seems that I forgot to include the VARS file. Upgrade the app repository. We do a distro upgrade and then we auto remove all the unused packages so that we clean up. We check if a reboot is required, basically checks if this file is present here at this pad, that means a reboot is required. And then if so, we go ahead and reboot the machine and then wait for it to come back up. This is how we add the conditional to a step. You use the when property here, and then we can access this variable that we registered here. So we check if this, the file stat, because we are using the stat command on this file path, and that command's output has the exists property. So basically what this means is that if that file exists, we are going to run this step. Okay, so as you can see, all of the servers were updated, reboot wasn't required, so these steps were skipped, which is great. And now if we look, we had 8.3.3 before, and now it's already 8.3.5, and this was what the updates UI showed me before. Probably if I refresh this right now, yeah, it shows that no updates are available, so everything's currently up to date. Perfect, so our nice little automation worked. Now for the next automation, we are going to create a playbook that initializes PostgreSQL database with a few users and a few databases. So I have three applications on my multimedia server that use a PostgreSQL database, NA10, InPhysical, and Nginx Proxy Manager. So same as before, here I'm targeting only the multimedia server. I'm running everything as root. I'm including the secret, same as before. And here I declare some additional variables. I want three Postgres users, NA10, InPhysical and NPM. And then here we are going to use the Postgres SQL Ansible module. So one of them is Postgres SQL ping, which just checks the connectivity to a Postgres SQL database. So here we are trying to connect to localhost port 5432, which is the default Postgres port. And we are logging as the root Postgres user. And then here is the Postgres root password, which is from the vault secret. And we just register a variable called result, which will be the result of the Postgres SQL ping. And then for debugging purposes, we can print it to the console. And then we have a few additional tasks. One is to create a Postgres user. And here we are looping through the variable I defined here, Postgres users. For each user, we are creating a Postgres SQL login with that username and the same password as the root password. So yeah, probably don't do that, but here I'm keeping it simple. We set the state of this user to be present, and here we log into the local host on the same port with the root user login. After the users are created, we then create a database for each user with the same name as the username. Once that is done, we need to grant all privileges to this database to the role with the same name, because again, we are looping over all of the Postgres users. And then just as a test, we can ping Postgres SQL or try to connect Postgres SQL with all the three newly created users. So let's see how this works. 
as you can see I'm running Postgres 17.2 here as you can see it's looping through all of the users and then you know creating the user creating the database and then granting all the privileges and then trying to log in and everything passed successfully now a nice thing about Ansible is that most of the commands define the desired state and this makes these commands idempotent. What does that mean in this context of infrastructure as code? That means we define the desired state and then we can run the automation regardless of the current state. We will always end up with the desired state. So, for example, if the user was already present, then in that case, this step does nothing. Same goes with the package. If the package is already installed, it will not try to reinstall it. This makes it very safe to run these automations over and over and over again, and you will always get the same results. So that's what idempotency means in this context, the ability to run these playbooks over and over again, and just not worry about the starting state of each machine. This is great when you're running Ansible playbooks from a CI CD pipeline, for example. If these automations were not it important, then you would have to do a bunch of checking and if statements and branching logics in your automation to check if the user already exists, don't create it. If the package was already exists, don't reinstall it and stuff like that. Now that's all handled for you by Ansible and these automations are safe to run over and over again. And that's how you can automate your server operations with Ansible. We've seen today what it important means in the context of infrastructure as code. And that is that you can run the scripts regardless of the initial state of the machine as many times as you want. And the end result is always the desired state. And this is incredibly powerful because it allows you to target all VMs, not just the ones needing an upgrade, for example, without causing any issues. Remember that we talked about idempotency in other videos, such as the one about database migrations and how crucial this concept is in various software engineering contexts. It's a principle that extends even into functional programming with pure functions. This is a truly better way to approach software engineering. So without it, you'd be stuck writing overly complex scripts filled with if else statements, checks, different branches. You get the idea. Now, what do you think about Ansible? Write down below. Let's get that counter to 2K and also check out my other videos for more on Kubernetes, databases and other software engineering topics. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.